Hello and welcome to Options in Plain English Advanced Edition. Unlike a stock portfolio, an options portfolio needs to be changed and adapted constantly because of options expiration. It is therefore critical that you have a trading plan guiding you through the management of every one of your options positions if you want to achieve consistent profitability and a professional approach to trading options. In this lesson, we're going to talk about having a methodology to deal with options trading cycles and how to efficiently close, roll, and let options go to expiration. We'll look at an example of what an options trading cycle could look like for a primarily premium selling portfolio. Later, we'll go further into trade management and look at a flowchart for managing a strangle, something that is perhaps not explicitly necessary for every trader, but also something that most experienced option traders do instinctively. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to consider a methodology for managing your portfolio and all its positions as part of a cyclical process and this will partially remove the emotions associated with options and trading in general. This will lead to a more professional and consistent approach as you take your options trading to a new level. We're going to start by taking a look at a typical options portfolio. This is something very similar to what you could have if you had an options portfolio. You have several different underlines and under every underlying you have the different components, the different options that make up altogether your whole options portfolio. Here you have the uh, underlines, you have uh, Apple, you have American Express, Cree, Disney, Google, etc. And the options for those underlines, you can see right here. So for example, this one's a short put, this one's a short put, this one's a short call spread, this is a long call. And one of the things you notice right away when you start analyzing a, uh, an options portfolio is the fact that those options have expiration dates. So for example, this one, this put expires in 10 days. This one expires in 38 days. So all of these components are going to expire. So something needs to happen to them. Otherwise, they're just going to roll off and then you're going to be left with nothing for that particular underlying. For example, in 10 days, once these go away, then you're not going to have anything for NVIDIA, for example, in this particular case. So something needs to happen to these components and how you deal with them is something that you need to determine yourself. Options have expiration dates, so an options portfolio cannot remain static and needs to constantly evolve as options approach expiration, which is what we mentioned. Also, once an options position has been initiated, as it approaches expiration, it'll have to go through one of these three processes. So once it's open, it, you're, you're, you're either going to have to close it, you're going to have to roll it to the next month or to the next expiration, or you're going to leave it to expire. So it's going to be left to expire. So it, you have to do something to them, and it's it's got to be one of these three things. So you're, you're either going to close it, you're going to roll it, or you're going to let it expire. So how do you make that determination? Well, you have to have a trading plan that tells you more or less how you're going to deal with uh, every position or every trade that you put on once you initiate it. You could also um, determine or decide as you go, but this is a very uh, difficult thing to do because uh, usually when you have a position on, emotions take over and sometimes you end up making decisions that are not conducive to having a uh, consistently profitable portfolio. And because of this, it is better to have a whole methodology to deal with all your options positions. And this is especially um, important and critical for options portfolios because they expire. If you have a stock portfolio, you can set it and forget it and you can just uh, buy stock and then leave it there and collect the dividends if they pay out a dividend and uh, not have to worry about it anymore. With options, you have to take action. You have to either close them, you have to roll them, or you make a decision to let, it, let them expire. So how do you deal with this cyclical process? Because let's say, for example, you have the 10 days and then you decide for whatever reason, you decide to roll it to the 38 days. Well, in 38 days, you're going to be uh, confronted with the same question. You're going to have to make the same decision. What, what am I going to do? Am I going to close them? Am I, I going to roll them? Am I going to just uh, let them expire? 
So you have to have a cyclical process and a methodology so that um, your positions go through a very similar process once they uh, start working in your portfolio. A trading plan is a detailed methodology for selecting, initiating, and managing trades. So you have to have a certain plan so that you know how you're going to select your um, your underlines, how you're going to select your options, how you're going to select your strategy, how you're going to initiate it, um, how much money you're going to allocate to those particular trades. And all of this uh, information has to be in your trading plan. If you don't have a trading plan, you're going to be just um, working as you go. And that is not really a way to be consistent. You're going to have some trades that are going to work out fine. Some of them are going to be home runs and some of them are going to be huge losses. And for the most part, your portfolio is not going to be displaying the uh, characteristics of a very consistently profitable portfolio. Because of this, if you want to apply a uh, professional, more professional approach, you have to work on your trading plan. All expiring positions will need to be managed or they will expire. This is what we mentioned. Maybe you decide to let them expire, so which is fine. That's one course of action. But what if uh, you want to close them because you don't want to take assignment of, uh, of uh, if you have a short option or you, you don't want to commit the uh, capital to exercise one of your positions that you're long. So you have to make a decision as to what you're going to do with uh, those trades, with those options. Okay. In doing so, you have to have a, uh, a consistent cyclical process so that uh, you uh, start working in a very reliable and in a very uh, consistent way. So, for example, this is we're going to take a look at the um, trading cycle for the trade management of a uh, 45 day to expiration option trading cycle. So, for example, if you if you decide to work on your portfolio and to use for the most part a uh, 45 day to expiration cycle. So you're going to be opening um, new positions, new trades based on a uh, time to expiration that's going to be approximately 45 days to expiration. Then you're going to have to have a cycle that you need to follow once the expiration starts getting closer and also once those positions need to be adjusted or rolled remember adjustments happen in the same expiration you just change the strikes or you add another component or you do anything to the uh, to the uh, trade but you leave the uh, time to expiration alone so it's in the same cycle okay so this is an example. This is something that we um, that we follow, and something like this should be in your arsenal as well. So in this case, what you have here is the uh, number of days to expiration, 45, 35, 28, 21, 14, 7, and until we reach expiration right here. So this is time is moving from left to right. Okay. So when, once you put the position on, so this is an example, it doesn't need to be this way, but it has to be something like this so that you have a very standardized way of dealing with all the different options that you have in your portfolio. So for example, here you put the position on, I don't care what kind of position. I just know that it's a 45 day to expiration cycle that I'm going, going to be working on here. And uh, you, you put the position on and if, if there is um, a need to make an adjustment, so for example, if you have a short strangle and it moved a lot and now you have to balance your deltas, if it happens between 45 and 35 days to expiration, you can make, an, you can make that adjustment on the same cycle. The reason why we, um, th we thought about design designing it this way is because once you put a position on, since we're looking to uh, collect theta and it's primarily a premium selling strategy here we want to keep every adjustment for at least two weeks to give it time to uh, at least collect some significant theta otherwise if you're going to adjust it and then right away roll it to the next month it's not going to make sense to do so so in this case for example between 35 and 28 days 
we make those adjustments on the same cycle and we keep at least two weeks okay so if you make an adjustment of 35 days to expiration you want to keep it until it hits 21 days to expiration at 21 days to expiration we want to start rolling everything out to the next month or to the next expiration to avoid this this period which is a dangerous period because even though it's the one with the highest theta it's also the one with the highest gamma and because of this when you run a, a premium selling portfolio this is the this is the place where you can sustain very heavy losses and we want to avoid this period unless we want to shoot for it so for example with uh, with an earnings earnings play or or something like that but for the most part our normal positions we try to avoid this so we want to be out of everything by 21 days now if you make an adjustment for example for example here on the um on day when there's 30 days to go we want to keep it at least two weeks so it's going to go all the way to 30 minus 14 is going to go all the way to 16 days to expiration so i want to keep this for all for this period all the way and i'm going to skip the default rollout and i'm going to go all the way to 16 days to expiration i'm going to i'm going to evaluate again and then i'm going to determine whether i want to roll it or i want to close it if i have the uh, the profits that i want already okay so in this period between 35 and 28 you adjust the same cycle you don't roll out yet okay and because of this a, at 28 days you're going to hit the 14 days to expiration here which is going to be your final rollout date for those positions so if you adjust with 28 days to go you have to leave it on for two weeks and this is based on some studies that we've done and we've seen where um, for significant theta to um, to provide you with uh, enough profits that it makes sense to put that position on we want to work with a cycle of at least two weeks that's why we go from 28 to 14 at this point you're gonna have to de determine whether i want to close or i want to roll to the next month at 28 days to expiration any new position that comes in is going to use the next cycle for new trades because we are aiming for 45 days so when there's 28 days remaining usually you have um at, uh you have a uh, period of uh, 28 days here but on the next uh, monthly cycle you're going to have 28 plus 28 so 56 days to expiration at which point you want to start using those 56 days to expiration because these 28 are too few days for our strategies to develop and give us the profits that we want so you have the indication here that if you want to initiate new positions you, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to use the next cycle okay in the period between 28 and 21 days we're going to adjust the strikes and roll out okay so if you decide to um that you want to make an adjustment here for example you have 24 days to go nothing had happened but at that point with 24 days to go your strangle for example uh, goes over and requires an adjustment so if i make an adjustment and there's 24 days to go and i want to keep it for at least two weeks because adjustments in the same cycle should be kept for at least two weeks then i'm gonna have to take that position from 24 all the way to 10 days which is very dangerous so instead of doing that i'm going to move uh, forward in time the uh, default rollout date and at this point i'm going to adjust so say for example uh, it uh, broke through my uh, my short uh, strike on the upside and i want to bring the um, the put forward and i want to uh, move it higher roll it higher in strikes so what i want to do then is i'm going to do that but i'm going to do it for the next cycle so in, if i have 24 days to go 24 plus 28 i'm going to be pretty much rolling that position from this cycle to the new cycle which is going to have 
uh, something like 52 days to go. So that's how you keep moving those positions and making sure that they don't hit this dangerous period. Okay. So once you hit 21 days, you have to make that determination whether you're going to close the position, you're going to roll the position, or you're going to let it expire. Now, we have certain um, certain considerations for leaving uh, some positions. So, for example, if you have a losing defined risk trade, then what you want to do is you want to leave it on because there's not too much more you can lose. And you could have a situation where it comes back and at least you can take it off for even or to, you can maybe make a little profit. So because of this, some so at this point is the first drop date date. You have to get take a look at all your positions and determine, okay, this one has enough profits, whatever it is that you consider enough profit. So for example, uh, 50 percent uh, of max profit or 40 percent or 25 or 10 or 15, whatever it is that you consider enough profit. And if you feel that it's it's worth it to close it, then you close it right there and then it goes away. Some of them you're going to roll to get additional credit or just to extend duration waiting for a, a, a favorable move for your position. So those ones you roll and then some other ones you're going to leave for this dangerous period because you have nothing left to lose. And so you would leave them on and see what happens. Maybe maybe uh, something unexpected happens and, 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 and then you get saved by the bell so to speak so you leave only the losing the fine risk trades and take them off for at least even if possible so once you hit 14 days to expiration these ones that you adjusted here are going to be hitting your final uh, rollout date and at this point you're going to have to make that determination again you're going to determine whether you're going to close them or whether you're going to roll them to the next month so by this date you make that determination and then now you are going to be left with only the losing the fine risk trade. So it's going to be just a few positions and you're going to start working. You're going to have to start working on putting on the uh, new positions because of the ones that you closed with profit. You're going to have a, um, a shortfall in terms of your uh, capital is not going to be completely uh, put to work. So you have to put on new positions. So you have to constantly be searching for new option positions that are favorable for your portfolio. And uh, that's something that you have to do constantly, though. This is what this is a trading cycle that I talk about. It's a constant um, process where you're always looking for opportunity. You're always evaluating whether it makes sense to keep a position or to roll it or to close it. And uh, that's how you manage your portfolio. This is very different than the way you manage a stock portfolio. For a stock portfolio, you maybe you put it on and then every month you take a look. And if you like it, uh, you close or you uh, or you uh, leave, leave those positions on. You collect the dividends and you do whatever it is you have to do. You don't have to be rolling them constantly because they don't expire. If you think about a... Um, an options portfolio, the same way you 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 deal with a, a stock portfolio, then you're you're in for a big surprise because you're gonna notice that those positions are gonna start expiring, and you have to always be ready to uh, put on new positions because some of them are going to start uh, dropping off. You're not gonna have them anymore. So for the next cycle, when you hit 45 days again, if you decided to use 50% of your capital and you're only using 10% of your capital, well, you have to work on and, and look for new positions and put them on so that you can think of uh, making the uh, profits that you expect. Another thing you can have as a trader is if you want to have a very professional approach, you can actually have a flow chart of every type of position that you have that you put on. So for example, this is our flow chart for uh, managing a strangle. And we have certain uh, abbreviations here. The uh, days to expiration, profit and loss, all the adjustments and rolls must be done for credits, etc. So you can just follow the uh, the flow chart and it's going to tell you what to do. Okay. So 
course, you don't need to have this, but in your mind, most traders, in their mind, they have this um, instinctively uh, ingrained in their, um, in their um, methodology when they start trading options. So, so let's go through this example just so you so you take so you so you look at how to process all the different decisions that need to be made when you have a position on and you need to manage it. So when you start the position and maybe you reach your profit target right away, you close it for a profit and that's it. So this is an ideal situation. You put it on, you reach your profit target and then you close it for a profit and that's it. If you don't and it's not where you would like it to be, then you go how many days to expiration, you're going to manage differently depending on where you are. And then if this, in this case, we're talking about strangles only, so, so short strangles, so it's a short a put, short a call, both of them out of the money, so with the stock price in between. Uh, has it breached the break, the break even? If no, then you just continue uh, wondering or asking whether you will reach your profit target. If it did breach your break even, then you adjust the strikes to reduce the delta by 50% in the same expiration. And then you go and ask again, did we reach our profit target? Once you get to the uh, 35 to 28 days to expiration, you do the same thing. You ask the same thing, adjust the strikes to reduce delta by 50% keep it at least 14 days in the same cycle, which is what we were talking about, and then you go back. If no, then you go back. You just continue waiting, okay? In the 28 to 21 day to expiration range, if you uh, if you haven't bre breached your break even, then you just continue uh, asking whether you reach your profit target. And if you did, you have to make sure that, uh, for example, in this case, since we're talking about companies and not about uh, indices or ETFs, uh, we ask whether there is an earnings report in the next cycle, in the next cycle that we could roll this out to. If there is, we keep waiting. If there's no earnings, then at this point, between 28 and 21 days to expiration, we roll them out and we adjust the strikes at the same time to reduce delta by 50%. So at this point, you're in the next month and you have you don't have 28 to 21 days anymore. You probably have anywhere from um, 56 to uh, 49 days to expiration now. Now, if you hit the uh, 21 to 14 days to expiration um, range, then you ask whether there was um, whether there was anything done between the last adjustment and now. So whether the uh, last adjustment was at least 14 days ago and if it was then if it, if it was and then you keep waiting and if it was you ask yourself okay do we have earnings report an earnings report in the next cycle if you don't and you have a positive p l day then you roll them out and adjust the strikes if needed and then you keep waiting and if you if there is an earnings report in the next cycle you ask whether you have a p l on this day of uh, positive PL, and then if you did, then you just close it because you're not going to risk the uh, the uh, next cycle going into earnings. Okay, so because we have uh, particular specific um, strategies for earnings, we don't want to we don't want our longer term positions to uh, to merge with the earnings uh, strategies because they're very different. If it's not, then you keep waiting. And then once you hit the uh, 14 days to expiration all the way to expiration, you ask whether you have an earnings in the next cycle. And if you don't, then you roll them out and adjust the strikes. And otherwise, you wait for a positive day and then you close it. Okay. So I'm not saying that you should have this for every position or type of position that you put on but in your mind this is the way you should be thinking about this you should be thinking about not only the position itself but you should be thinking about the uh, timing and which uh, at, w at what point in the trading cycle you're at so are you right at the beginning are you right in the middle are you about to hit for example 21 days to expiration at which point you want to start uh, cleaning up your your um, your portfolio, make sure that uh, everything is rolled out, 
and uh, everything is closed that needs to be closed, etc. So something like this should be always present for you as you navigate the, um, the uh, process of having a, an, an options portfolio. Most important thing of this lesson is to understand that having an options portfolio is very different than a stock portfolio. You need to constantly be in the process of looking for new trades, rolling out existing trades, closing trades, etc. So um, it's something that needs to be always on your mind. And it's, it's something that um, makes option traders different than stock traders. Option traders are always making decisions. They're always thinking in their heads. Do I keep it? Do I roll it? Do I adjust it? Uh, how much credit am I getting? What's the implied volatility right now? Um, is there a, a, a um, some sort of news coming out? Uh, so this information is always uh, important for you. But more important than that is to be always aware that be aware of the 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 the, uh, the fact that options have a cycle and you have to work uh, in that cycle to be able to manage your portfolio efficiently. So I hope that this was a way to um, understand how to visualize all the different strategies that you can use and also so that you can visualize the fact that uh, an option portfolio is a very different uh, it's a very different portfolio than one that's made up of stocks, for example, where you don't have to constantly be thinking about uh, finding new trades and uh, dealing and, and managing existing trades. For an option trader, it's it's always the case that you're going to be having to make decisions. And for those uh, situations, you're going to have to consider many different components, many different factors. Uh, implied volatility, uh, price, uh, whether, whether there's news coming out, uh, where we are in the cycle, etc. So this is what makes option traders different than stock traders, for example, where they probably just worry about uh, the uh, whether you want to buy or sell and when they want to buy or sell. Um, now that you know this, you're going to be able to apply this information so that you can put together a trading plan and also uh, a so that you have a good understanding of, a, of an option trading cycle and that you can apply this information so that you can achieve what we all want, which is uh, consistent profitability with minimal risk, which is what we want to get out of your option portfolio. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye.